in this episode we have a fast sail from San Andres to Bocas del Toro in Panama after our short visit to San Andres. A perfect weather window for B3 with good winds and a chance to show G how fast B3 sails in the right conditions. Again enjoying my time out sailing the big blue knowing almost everything now works as it should. In the previous episode we enjoyed being back in San Andres and my new friend from Holland showed me her kite surfing skills, that's something I wanted to learn for a long time. I also rented a scooter as a surprise for G to show her the island and we was even invited out on a semi submarine for a day trip, snorkeling and great fun. But now it's time to wrap up things here as our stay in San Andreas comes to its end for this time. We are sailing back to Shelter Bay in Panama with a quick stop in Bocas on the way. So it's a temporary fix because the zipper was shredded off the strong wind here. So it's time to replace it. Uh, we've been looking at uh, weather predictions and um, wind and the weather window for tomorrow and the next day looks very good for us. It's around 25 to 23 knots of wind, so I think it will be perfect. So we're planning on setting sail to Panama, um, to Bocas del Toro. But before I can do that, I have to make sure I can get my Sarpe. Um, that means I need to contact my agent. Um, normally it takes a few days, hopefully he can do it in 24 hours. This is a perfect weather window for us, however closer to Panama it's like normal, only 8 to 12 knots of wind, meaning we most likely will need some hours of motoring the last miles. But first see what our agent is saying. Mr. Julian Watson is never letting me down and I'm so happy to have a good agent here in San Andres. We can now start to prepare our departure for tomorrow. So I prepared my jerry cans. Uh, not that we need much diesel, uh, but uh, diesel is uh, cheaper here in Colombian territory than in Panama. Also in Bocas del Toro, they are out of diesel. So I always like to go with the top top on diesel and pack up on my jerry cans. So getting the garbage and the of diesel. So uh, now I'm gonna do a little service on the generator. Um, I have a lot of things here and the first thing I'm gonna do is to replace uh, the diesel filter because the Panda generator is very picky on its fuel. Um, also I have a lot of other stuff here. I have backup water pumps and a lot of filters and uh, impellers and stuff so I'm gonna change that now because uh, I think it's time. So I'm now in the basement under the garage where the generator is sitting. Um, I'm gonna start replacing the diesel filter. And um, This filter is, uh, I don't know, it's like I feel that like I have to change it quite often so it's nice to have a little stock on board. For the generator. So, I mean it's compact but it's still when I take the hatch off uh, here in the garage it's um, pretty accessible. So this um, diesel filter has um, a label that shows you which direction the fuel comes in and where the diesel comes out and on this one it says under here in then this is out so Let's see if we can get this back on. So, I'm done. <laughs> I have this uh, love and hate relationship to this generator, but uh, after uh, I rebuilt it in Martinique, it's actually pretty good now. So, I'm, I'm quite happy to be honest. So, but now, I'm done. 
Even with this crazy power station on board, it's nice to have a generator. It's not always sunshine, and after 7 to 10 days with rain or heavy use, I would need to top up. Lithium on board is for sure a game changer, but it still needs to be charged up at some point. I will share more from this after I have more experience in how things works for me. Okay, it's 7.50 in the morning and I'm on my way to shore to have our passport stamped and clear out of San Andreas. And as one of the few Caribbean islands, the friendly and smiling agent, accompanied with its represents from customs and immigration, is already waiting at the dock to do our paperwork. Not many places things goes as smooth and even on time as it does here in San Andres. Once our paperwork was done, I had a last minute shopping to do for my DJ friend waiting in Panama. He wanted the same sound speakers as I have, so I'm picking up a pair for him at one of the music stores here. It was very tempting, but not this time. I'm here for the same speakers I bought to myself last time I was here. Now I only have to bring this on board for John the Hook and a few trays of beers as well before we take up the anchor and leave. I have not shared yet how my new anchor works and for sure will do so later. The 56 kilo Mantus worked really great here in San Andres, but I'm gonna test it a bit more before I share it with you guys. We are ready to leave San Andres. Um, I'm taking up the anchor. <laughs> it's so easy on this boat because I do everything here from the cockpit. I, I see the chain, I feel the boat. Um, yeah, just push button. We are moving outside the lagoon before hoisting the sails and it looks really good. At the moment it's only 17 to 20 knots of wind, but it's supposed to increase in less than one hour. So I'm pretty sure we're gonna have a fast and nice sail to Bocas del Toro. A bit delayed out of San Andres, but it looks like we timed it good with the wind and are already flying over the Caribbean Sea. G is a kite surfer and loves the speed of B-Free, and gusting to 30 knots doesn't scare her. She always tells me, wow, now it would be perfect for kite surfing. So she definitely have a great attitude towards sailing on a boat like B-Free. Even with a crew on board, I follow my solo sailor routines, meaning I take my power naps trying to get as much rest as possible before it gets dark. Normally, I stay awake the entire night as it's more complicated sailing and bigger changes in wind and weather.
Sailing the southwest part of the Caribbean this time of years is probably the best sailing you can get. Trade winds are pumping constantly from east and the sunny days makes it into the perfect experience. Only thing is the strong ocean currents making the sea a bit confused and a bit too short distance between the bigger waves to really pick up some serious speed. But who can complain when baking pizza flying more than 10 knots over the western Caribbean? And just give me a few slices of bread with ham and cheese in the morning and a fresh batch of coffee to go with the sunrise and I'm in heaven. The wind starts to come down just as predicted when getting closer to Bocas del Toro. 
I'm trying my best to maintain some speed here, but most likely we would need to motor sail or even take down the sails, only going by motor the last miles. Flopping sails is no fun and also unnecessary wear and tear on sails, ropes and rigging. After trying all the tricks I have in my sleeves, I just had to capitulate and start the engine. Normally a code 0 would do the job, but in this region that's a bit scary as 40 knots of wind can surprise you from nowhere, often in an opposite direction. I tried to keep the mainsail up a bit longer as it helps to stabilize B3 in these waves. But with only 8 knots of wind it's the engine that has to do the job. Going around 8 knots over ground by engine, surfing beyond 10 knots now and then attracts dolphins welcoming us to Panamanian waters. And just like that we had a squall with rain and wind gusts above 40 knots. Exactly how I have experienced this region before, making me proud to trust my own decision in not flying the code zero, no matter how tempting it was. And once again I don't practice what I preach by entering this anchorage after sunset. Lots of sailors popping off their heads from the cockpits, looking at us coming backwards into this crowded anchorage. However, it's my anchor at night in crowded place strategy as a solo sailor. With this technique I have full control and can better see other boats in the dark. Thank you so much for watching and if you haven't already I would be very happy to see you subscribe to my channel. All the best and cheers from Bocas del Toro. Be happy and be free. Singing my